strawberry lemonade popsicle. Uh, for, well, you saw how many I made here. Uh, I did uh, one batch of the pink, the white layer, and two batches of the red layer to make all of those popsicles. So if you're going to make a small amount, then cut your recipe down. Uh, just make one batch of the red layer and half a batch of white layer, and then you'll get half the amount of popsicles that I had. But if your popsicle molds are bigger, you know, uh, you'll make less amount of them. Where did you get these little uh, containers? Those little containers I got at Kmart. <laughs> they're really, really nice. They're they're the same size as the Dixie bathroom cups, only they're plastic mm -hmm. instead of paper, which was perfect for this. Yeah. Um, Christina, both those um, recipes have lemon juice in them. What what's the role of the lemon juice? I uh, there's a number of reasons why I like to put lemon juice. One is because I like the strawberry lemonade flavor personally. Uh, another is the lemon juice acts as a preservative uh, to help keep the strawberries from sweating. And so I like to put that in. Pineapple juice would do the same thing, only it would make it sweeter instead of sour. Uh, so however you like it, you can substitute that with pineapple juice if you want. Uh, that's why I put it on there. If you don't want to use honey, you can use pineapple juice concentrate and just leave out the lemon juice entirely. Uh, you get to play around with it however you want. But I, uh, most people when they think of a popsicle, they think of a juice popsicle where you just, you know, mix up some concentrate into some water and, and dump it in and uh, basically those are pure sugar because uh, the concentrate has all the fiber removed and it's been boiled down and, uh, you know, then you just add water to it. It's basically like sugar water. It's not there's not a whole lot of difference. The difference with this is that you've got all of the fiber from the strawberry in it. We blend uh, the strawberries whole in the popsicles. Uh, I would do it for you, except you'd be here a while waiting for it to freeze. Uh, but if you don't want to take all the work to make a, a triple layer popsicle like I did, uh, you can just do the red layer and just make the strawberry popsicle. Or if you like the ice cream popsicle, that middle coconut layer, you can do just that layer. Uh, and maybe throw in a few more strawberries in with it. Uh, you don't have to do the triple layer like I did. But the triple layer was lots of fun. Uh, I just threw the strawberries and lemon juice and salt and honey and vanilla into the blender and blended it up. No water. Uh, I poured that into the bottom layer of all my cups. And uh, I didn't put any popsicle sticks or anything in it at that point. I just put them in the freezer for one hour until there's a nice crust forming over it. They're not totally frozen solid, but there's a nice crust. And then uh, I blend my second layer, which was uh, uh, the same coconut milk, only I didn't use the water. I just used the cream from the top part of the can. Okay? Uh, I just used that with a few strawberries to make it pink so it wasn't pure white. Uh, and uh, I actually put a few drops of lemon oil in it to give it a nice lemon ice cream taste. Uh, and a pinch of salt and the honey for sweetener. And blend that up and then I poured that over the second layer. Put it back in the freezer for 30 minutes until that's got a little crust on it. And then I did my red layer and poured that over the top. And after I put that third layer, that's when I stuck the popsicle sticks in because then the the first two layers were frozen enough to hold the popsicle stick straight up without it falling over. Uh, and uh, yeah, just let them freeze. I made those uh, yesterday evening, and then they froze overnight, and they were ready for today. Uh, very good. Very, they were a lot of fun. That's When I do stuff like that, that's when I say I'm playing in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't have time, just do one layer and make it all. Your, your grandkids won't know that you could have done three layers. <laughs> Okay, and then the other thing I wanted to tell you about on the back side is the cooked millet. And you'll notice I made a terrible mistake on your little thing, and I said quinoa. It should say millet. <laughs> uh, last month I did quinoa, and I uh, used the same recipe again and forgot to change the name. So uh, that is supposed to be one cup of raw millet uh, to four cups of water. And uh, you can do it two ways. You can do the crock pot, or you can do it on the stove. I am lazy, so I like the crock pot, okay? I like the kind of stuff
up where I can just turn it on the night before and wake up in the morning and it's all done. Anybody else like that? Am I, am I the only one? Uh, I'm even that way here, believe it or not, okay? <laughs> I like to find shortcuts. And uh, so, yeah, you can either do it the night before or you can do it the morning of. If you want something like this for dinner, start the meal first thing in the morning. And uh, if you have a crock pot that has a timer that automatically turns itself to keep warm when it's done cooking, I like to set it. You'll have to experiment with your crock pot. Some crock pots, six hours, it's done. Some crock pots, it takes eight hours. Uh, otherwise, if, you're, if you have one like this with just a knob, uh, I just do it at night before I go to bed and first thing in the morning when I wake up, it's been between six to eight hours and I shut it off. Uh, or turn it down to warm if it's going to be a little while. Uh, millet is good for so many things and uh, usually I like to do it the night before, like I said, and serve it for breakfast because then whatever is left over, I always do too much on purpose. Because whatever is left over after I've served it for breakfast, I make a batch of uh, my salad dressing and I put it in jars and seal it, put that in the fridge, and that's good for a week once I do that. Uh, and then I make a batch of cheesecake out of the rest of it, and then my millet's all gone. And if it's not all gone because I made a huge batch of it, then I make millet patties out of the rest of it. Uh, and so I never have to worry. Uh, or if I don't have time that day to do all of that, uh, there are some things I can use leftover millet for. Uh, it doesn't work for cheesecake, but it will work for a salad dressing uh, if it's leftover and cold. Uh, or you can use it, I use it in the vegetable soup that we serve here. The creamy white soup base uh, is made out of cooked millet. And uh, so I use leftover millet for that. So there's a hundred uses for millet. Uh, so I always do a full crock pot even if there's only one person eating it for breakfast. And uh, I know the rest will be gone in the next few days. Uh, or we'll be eating it in a whole bunch of different ways. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, besides the fact that it's super healthy for you, and it's always nice to have a change from oatmeal or rice. Uh, typically, we get stuck in the oatmeal and rice rut. That's nice to have something that has different vitamins in it, and that's good for you. And uh, I like the fact uh, that it's just it's lighter. It's not so heavy. Uh, but it still is full of fiber and it holds you over well. Uh, so, any questions on those two recipes? I wish I could demonstrate everything, but I don't think you want I take strawberries. And this is especially this time of year. But you can use any fruit. It doesn't have to be strawberries, right? We just happen to have strawberries because uh, they're, they're here. And I put, basically, if I have a small blender, I fill it like three quarters full of strawberries. And... Uh, just going to fill three quarters full of strawberries. Uh, and then I put uh, a pinch of salt in it and a little bit of vanilla.
with that I'm coming. But what I do is I take my fresh, the rest of my fresh fruit and I cut it in pieces and I add it to this bowl until my bowl is full. And I put it in the fridge. She's got some. Look at that. They're fast. Please have helpers in the kitchen. Okay, we're going to add our fresh thing. Yep. Fresh strawberries to it. And uh, I'm just going to steal a spoon here. Put it in the fridge for one hour and you have fruit sauce. Thicken fruit sauce because that chia seed will thicken that whole sauce. You don't have to cook it at all. Because you know how oftentimes you have to cook, add cornstarch or whatever to help thicken fruit. This is strawberry sauce ready for waffles or pancakes uh, or whatever else you want, toast, whatever you want to put it on. And it's completely raw and completely healthy. And uh, like I said, it will thicken so it's not so soupy and runny. Um, and you can adjust it however you want to taste. Add more honey in it if it's not sweet enough, whatever you want. Um, and you have pure raw strawberry sauce. Doesn't that look good? <laughs> yes. Um, I made that uh, this past weekend for some friends. I actually served it on cornbread because we like sweet stuff with cornbread instead of pinto beans and cornbread. Oh, it's really good on top of cornbread. <laughs> it's amazing. Other things you can do with chia seed. Uh, if you go to my website, which is on your little recipe handout, uh, it's uh, at the bottom of that little square. It says christinaskitchen.org. If you go there and look up under fruit recipes, you'll see a recipe for ambrosia. And that is basically a fruit salad like this, but uh, the coconut milk has been thickened with chia seeds. And you mix that up in your fruit. And it's like almost like a tapioca pudding uh, fruit. And it's absolutely fabulous. Um, and that's another way I love to use chia seeds. Um, otherwise, you can just put two tablespoons in a little bit of water or milk or juice or whatever you like and let it sit for 20 minutes before you eat it and just put it on your bowl of fruit. Uh, and it's really good that way too. What would happen if you just sprinkled the seed directly onto, say, fruit or? You can. Okay. In fact, you can even uh, put uh, two tablespoons <clears throat> in a cup of water and just drink it. And they will swell in your stomach and dissolve, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's like sprinkleable fiber. Um, and yeah, you can just sprinkle it on food and eat it that way. It's a little crunchy when you eat it that way because they're a little hard to chew. Um, but they're not bad. And you can do that too. Um, I prefer the soaking or blending them because it's easier to get them down that way. But whatever you prefer, it works. And it, they're extremely healthy for you. Uh, they recommend two tablespoons a day uh, just to add fiber and to help your digestion. Any other questions? I threw in a bonus recipe for you. I hope you wrote it down. <laughs> I'm sure you'll remember it.